Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, everybody. Welcome to your favorite niche land podcast. And today... I have a very, very special guest. And you know what? It's so weird because you hear this voice and you're so used to a geek just talking. And today, it's not a geek. It's a cool guy. Actually, I'm not that cool. This is Jaran Frazier. And a special guest by the name of Mark Podolsky. And the crowd goes wild. Man, that was a great introduction. Kind of short. I was going to, I thought maybe you'd give my biography. Conducted over. 5,000 land deals since 2001. I didn't have notes. You know, that was very impromptu. I had no notes. So what do you want me to do here? You want me to start over again? That's okay. Land Geek Nation. How's everyone doing? What did you think of that intro? If you you didn't like it, just tell us because I didn't like it either. (laughs) But you know what? For first take, it is first time doing it. Not bad. I'm, I'm not a radio guy. I'm not a, you know. I'm not a talk show guy at all, but uh, but we can sure banter quite well. We can. You know, it's funny. Duran and I both sort of soaked in the great benefits of being our own boss and entrepreneurs. We each took the morning off, which was uh, fantastic. I had breakfast and coffee with my wife, and we hung around. Carolyn, what would you do? I had coffee this morning, just uh, relaxed. I slept in a little bit today. I took the kids to school. And then uh, I went to my favorite coffee shop, which, Mark, you know so well. Lofty Coffee. Lofty Coffee. And then, of course, I run into eight people I know. And this morning, because I wasn't really uh, in the focusing mood, I decided to talk to a few people and uh, lasted an hour and a half or so. But it's nice to kind of just, you know, break out a little bit and and, uh, not focus on work. Right. Right. Um, That's great. That's great. So how are things going on your end, Mark? I've been really busy. Closed um, five deals yesterday. So wow, doing a lot of paperwork, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. But I definitely need some help because between the two companies, I'm getting stretched a little too thin here. But You're that's exploding. okay. It's, 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 it's good growing pains. You're exploding, Mark. <laughs> exploding. I'm, yeah. I'm like incredible. a human grenade. That's incredible. You know what's really cool is I uh, – it's it's this is a very special weekend for me. Uh, I have to live it up, but to actually start by doing it on uh, the Friday or a couple days before my my big birthday. I have a big birthday coming up this weekend. That's actually not that big. It's thirty seven. No but for me, way. It's big That's, because, you're a baby because because I'm getting old. So every birthday becomes kind of a big deal because you're like, dude, I'm still I'm still here. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, so I uh, I'm gonna have a kind of a fun little weekend. My wife's got some stuff planned for us, but uh, in the midst of my birthday week, just just so you know, every year it happens to be property tax time, which is kind of you know it, it kind of it's it's a um, it's a bittersweet moment for me because what I do is I get caught up in all my property taxes until the next following year. Right. Um, but I have to write a nice big check to several counties. Right. Um, in several states, and Mark has that same situation going on, and it's not fun. Uh, it's a part of business. But I just wish it wasn't on my birthday every year. I know. You know what I do? I make it fun. And if you have kids, it's a lot of fun. Now, I, we, you know, you and I have a lot of property. I've got property taxes in so many different states and so many different counties. It's a big deal to go through it all and check it all. So I recruit help. My three children, right? Because it's just easy math. So I have I, – each one has their own day or, or own morning with me. And I typically do it over three Sundays. So we'll get up early Sunday morning. I'll get them Krispy Kreme. And I'll say, look, we're going to go over this county in Nevada. And I get them the, ca- the big calculator. And they go through each thing. And I, and I call out the APN number, right? So they have to look for the APN number. And I say, is that, my, is that mine? Or, um, you know, first I go over the APNs that are – I'm, I'm owner financing on a land contract. So even though they're in my name, that customer may owe me property taxes on those. Now, that's only on, that's only on a very few because now I prorate them. 
But I will go through that in Nevada. And then they'll do all the math, and then they'll watch me write the check, and I'll have them address it, stamp it, and we'll mail out our property tax check. So my 13-year-old does a few more counties than the 11-year-old, 9-year-old. But we make it fun because, let's face it, paying property taxes is not fun. What do you, what do you typically do? How, do? how do you make it fun? If, if I did that with my two children, I think I'd end up with my property tax in the toilet within about 20 seconds, all of them, uh, <laughs> either, either there or in my dog's mouth. So my, my kids uh, aren't quite there yet. My six-year-old um, may not be there for quite some time. My four-year-old, he could, he could probably sit there and concentrate a little bit more with me and help me uh, you know, get things organized. And he'd probably like that in about a year or two. But yeah, mine, mine is... Uh, I, I actually mine is very very. I've got a little system down, which is kind of cool. I just kind of organize all the counties. Um, quickly pop up the calculator. I'll just I'll tear off. There's little um, coupons that yeah, you get the, the counties. Little little pay stubs, and you, you tear them off. I add them together. I put a little post-it on top of it. I put a paper clip on top. So exactly, and I just write the check for all of them. So I uh, you know I mean I can get it all done in uh, you know. Between, I, I think between three and four hours, just uh, you know, compiling them all together, and then uh, just getting that calculator out. So yeah, you ever uh, you ever do it where like some counties will let you make payments, like you know, four payment four payments. Yeah, typically. Yeah. Will you ever do that, or you just always pay it in full? No, I you know to be honest with you, my my problem is just a time thing, and I'm not going to remember. Even though I'm really good at my calendar, I don't like to schedule out four months. It just depends, though. Some sometimes there's certain properties that I have that are that are, you know, in the thousands per right. year. And those obviously, uh, you know, it'd be silly of me to pay that all up front um, if I can take that money and do something else and make a return with it. So I would uh, I would do that. But for the most part, I'm paying a good chunk of these up front. Interesting. Okay, great, great. Yeah, but it's never any fun getting those bills. And it's, it's not like we don't know they're coming. It's just, it's always kind of depressing. Like, oh, I got to write a check, big checks. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not fun at all. And you know, it's interesting because um, you know, on the mining side, obviously, I've I've uh, I've jumped into uh, you know several projects on the mining side here in the last couple of years, and and mining has been very interesting because mining has had gone from uh, you know next to nothing for claims up to a hundred and forty dollars for twenty acres for a mining claim uh, in the last uh, in the last I think twelve months, which like that's a big jump. So Why, wait, these, that's a huge jump. Why would yeah. that happen? Uh, uh, BLM wants money, uh, and the and the the sad part is is now they've bumped it up another fifteen dollars. So it's like it went from zero to one hundred fifty five dollars per twenty acre claim. And a lot of these guys, I mean, a lot of these a lot of these mining guys will will, will claim an entire section, um, and you know, broken down into uh, twenty acre pieces. You, you're writing a very big check just to keep a mining claim. So that's um, crazy. Yeah. So how so, how quickly can you sell these mining claims? Uh, it depends. You know, there's actually, I don't know if you've seen, I've actually seen a couple of guys now on eBay that are just focused on mining claims. Very interesting. I, I've seen it. I don't know if they make any money on it. I don't, they don't sell for a lot of money. You know, mining, it's an interesting time right now. I think, I think uh, if the market changes, that might be in more demand, but the guys picked up some, some old claims that have fallen off. The, the interesting part is because of what the BLM has done the last 12 to 24 months, a lot of these claims have fallen off, right? Because people just can't afford to keep these claims. Right. Um, and, BLM sort of makes you do work on the property now, um, like maintenance work to keep the, to keep those claims up. So you can't just pay. You've got to, you've got to show at some level um, that you are doing some sort of maintenance to the property to keep these to keep these claims up. So uh, in reality, it's a bit expensive. And if you if you're just holding it for 20 years, hoping that you know something you know gold prices go through the roof and and silver prices or whatever you're mining, um, it's it's a little bit risky. So this guy's just picking up people's claims that are uh you know that are no longer being paid for and uh so it's interesting and i don't know how much he makes but you can pick it up but you know you can pick it up but i don't, I don't see him saying what the claim fees are right so I, you know which that could be a dilemma too because they, they buy something for seven or eight grand they realize they've got to pay you know four grand a year to keep these claims yeah that's so that's not good that's not good so you know it's interesting as far as the strategy is concerned um, especially with the land investing business, is that we'll typically target counties and areas where the property taxes are really, really cheap, right? Because we're not going after Manhattan property. And 
Would you agree with that, or do you do you not even take into account annual property taxes when you look at a deal? I no. you know you know I say that, but it just happens to be that way. I don't know if I would care or not if there's margin in it. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, look, it comes down to what is the margin. But the, at the end of the day, you don't want to get stuck. Look, I mean, we, you know, we can't guarantee you're going to find a, a buyer for for your property. We're going to tell you that there's a good chance there'll be a buyer there. And if you're sitting on a property for a year and and all of a sudden you have property tax that eat into your margins, it becomes a challenge. So I would, I, you know, I like to stay in counties that are um, are lower property taxes or known for low, lower property taxes because it just. You, if you focus on 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 just a you know a broad array of counties that that have properties, you could you could run into some problems if you're holding a property for a year or two. And, and what also you've got to look out for is, is a property association dues. If there's not kind of a value add with those association dues, and Mark, you and I have discussed this oh, in the past. Oh man, I hate association dues. I, I really avoid these developments with association dues for whatever reason. They take forever to sell, and I've come to the conclusion now: if you want to buy those lots. You better have builders already lined up to buy those lots from you and flip them there because to, to sell them to individuals, it just takes too long. I mean, there's there's that area in uh, in Nevada that we both bought in that's got association dues, and they're super cheap. They're super cheap. It takes me forever to sell that property. Yeah, the 20 bucks a month, and what's crazy, we don't know why. I mean, there is a, there there are a lot of them available. Um, I think there's 5,500 properties in the entire subdivision. Uh, of which I think a couple hundred are owned within a group of you know eight or ten guys that we all know, and and they're all really good properties. I've got I've got a ten acre property I'm selling right now, and uh, and what we're selling you, it for uh, what's that? What are you gonna get for that ten acre? Uh, I'll probably get six to seven grand cash. And what'd you pay for it? Um, I think I paid around a, th- gosh. a thousand. No, 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 no. I think I paid like three or four grand for it. Did you so, really? Yeah, not a huge, so that's the thing. We go back to it. I mean, sure, the margin's still great, though, Mark, from a cash No, 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 no I, I'm not complaining with the, the money made, but, man, it takes forever yeah. to sell those properties. Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even do the deal anymore yeah, unless, unless, I, you, unless but, you could have had it pre-sold to somebody. But let's, let, let me just put something into perspective for you. Anybody that knows this, this subdivision, if, if mining does take off in this area, if something changes, like there's a, there's a lot of like – um, you know, a, a lot of surrounding projects that bring employees in. Oh um, yeah, and, you're right. And if and if if mining changes and something a big project begins to explode in this area, they don't have many places to build. And this subdivision is there's a there's a property in there right now. They're asking 1.1 million for it's it's on Old Victory Road. It's a 1.1. 1. 1, uh, I'm sorry, it's a 40 acre property with a, a house on it, right? And a couple like smaller houses, but they're asking 1.1 1. 1 million. On, Vic, on Old Victory Road, so so th- there's value there. Um, this had a couple of like a little RV park. So if you're creative and and you can hold on, you know, and you're only paying. I mean, look at these things are nice. There's there is amenities. So there are there there are cabins that you can use 60 days a year. There are a lot of there's a lot of value add to owning property there, not just the property itself and paying a association. Do I mean I think you're paying about 30 bucks a month in association and property taxes. So at the end of the year, you're paying about 360 bucks. Right, but when, uh, you know when I analyze my inventory. The properties that don't have association dues, even though you can argue, are way inferior, way yeah. inferior to these properties that have association dues with amenities. The ones that are raw always sell so much faster. Always. I, I, why Why I, is that, Duran? I agree. I, you know, here's the, here's the interesting part, and in kind of as we talk, I think about it a little bit more. Uh, you, you have to you have to target the demographic that's going to want to utilize those cabins, right? And generally speaking, they're not a guy on the East Coast. So if you're trying to target a demographic of people that are going to use the property, you need to target a you know a radius of 200 miles of people that are actually going to drive out the property, go stay at the cabins for a week or two out of the year, and make use of that $360 payment they made, and knowing they still have their 10-acre parcel, um, th- there is value there. But m- unfortunately, a lot of people will buy online. They don't. They don't. They're not. They're not. They're not usually in that too. But I'm finding now more and more. That people that are looking at my property are are in that radius, right? So if you target it correctly with the right keywords, um, a lot of locals will find it. But you've got to go out and you've got to find that market and you've got to target them. Yeah, that's right. Speaking so, of tar- speaking of targeting, how's it going with Facebook? You know, I I I put the campaign on hold as I'm sort of tweaking. One of the things that in our in our model 
um, that Mark and I do is is we we analyze numbers and we sort of make tweaks to our to our campaigns. So right now I'm just sort of tweaking the campaign. I'm I'm adding a little bit of additional information so that I can sort of change uh, and and increase that conversion rate. Um, so I've got. Uh, I've got a, a couple of conversion specialists that are helping me tweak it a little bit. So. Oh, okay, great. Is that SEO guy helping you at all? At all? Uh, out? Yes, yes. Let, let, let's I, talk about that guy because when you emailed me, Dran emails me, we're going to have our uh, our two-day Land Geek boot camp in October. By the way, I called the uh, the resort, yep. and the 24th and 25th are already booked. What? Yeah, she's she's going to get it back to me. Wow. So we may have to change the venue. Okay. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying we don't do it in Scottsdale, but I'm saying that that resort we may not be able to do. So yeah, anyways, yeah. I'm, you know, Duran and I were trying to figure this out, when we're going to do it. He emails me like on, a, like on a weekend night. Like what is it, Saturday night. Just had dinner with the top SEO guy in San Diego. Have to have him at the, at the conference. Have to have him at the boot camp. And I, I wrote back, SEO is a total joke. Like – you can't beat Google's algorithms, and but and, Dre, and Dre's like, no, that's not true. It, it's not true. It's not true at all. Um, you know, it's and uh, it's interesting because as I as I as I think about SEO, uh, the the more I realize that it's it's just it's it's not a it's not a game that you play anymore. You know, of link building and all these other things that you used to be able to do, social bookmarking. It's it's kind of plain and simple and cut and dry these days. It's all about unique content. Unique it's content, content right. unique and engaging content. That's what really, that's what Google's algorithm is built around today. That's really so, hard to do. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it not. Is. Okay, it's not. Write, fine. Write me a, a thousand word blog post that's unique and engaging. Go. I've got to. Ex- I've got exactly. To. exactly. No, no, no. You don't want to ask me, Mark, because you know I can write that probably about. No, 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 I know you can do it, but I'm just saying it's. But you still have to sit down. I won't think do of it. the I've idea gotta, that's gotta, unique I've and gotta, engaging. Gotta, I've got a guy that does. What do you mean you've got a guy? I've got a you guy. you got a professional blogger? I've got a professional blogger that writes for me. For real estate? For real estate. For land? For land. Well, I blog, man, and it's tough. I do it myself. Yeah, you're terrible. I've seen your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Charles Barkley right there. You're terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but my, my golf swing's a little bit better than Charles Barkley. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I I, uh, I do have a writer, and he is really, really, really good. Is this a Fiverr writer? Where do you get this guy? I got him from Elance, Elance.com. Is he in the Philippines? No. he's a, I would never hire a Philippines writer. Are you kidding me? I need a guy that understands real estate here in the U.S. I pay him $25 a blog post. $25 a blog post? Correct. See, something's wrong here. I should be the one living off the beach in Carlsbad. Because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Twenty five bucks a blog post. Maybe it's like maybe it's like, maybe it's like twenty one bucks. No, but but it, it, this is this is for the this. You, just so you understand, I'm not I'm not blogging every day. If I blog, if I I believe the value in a in a hundred dollars to one hundred and fifty bucks a month in a writer is probably the most valuable thing I can do to pump traffic to my website organically. Does that okay, make sense? And, and it's working. I, I you know I'll, I'll agree. I agree. Okay. Okay. But how so, do you know how do you know it's working? I just watch my analytics, and it's working. Yeah, I mean, I get keywords. Lo- Remember, there's there's keywords. There's 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 the just standard one one and two word keywords, and then you have what's called long tail keywords, which are looking for land in Nevada or you know Humboldt River Ranch properties for sale in Nevada. And yes, right. I'm getting those I'm getting those hits from people on my website, um, and then so, from there. So, you let, yeah, so let's talk about that. Okay, just let's just break down how that really works. In a blog post. Okay. So what Duran will do, or what I will do is, well, I won't do it. I'll hire someone to do it, is we'll do some keyword research, right? We want to see what keywords people are typing into Google to search for land, land investing. What phrases are they using? Then we'll use that phrase and we'll tailor a blog post putting that keyword in strategic places. You want it in the title right? You want it in the permalink, right? You want it in your metadata and you want it in your content several times. So you, you basically are using that key. You're, you're basically focusing a, an article around that keyword. So when type, someone types into Google, 
you will be on the front page of Google. Is that correct? Am I explaining that correctly? That is correct. And I think that the algorithm, the, 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 the recent update, which I just heard somebody name, uh, it happened two weeks ago, called the Pigeon Update, um, which <laughs> is funny because they didn't have a name for it, so they just named it Pigeon. Right. Um, some big SEO guy did. So, um, yes, I, that is how it's done, but I think the algorithms are the, the recent change. The more and more are just geared to your, your content engaged, being engaged through Facebook, Twitter, social media outlets. Um, I think that's really what they want to see. Yes, it's important to not. I mean, they, they use the word, the term keyword stuff the article, but right. there, it is important to have those. Keywords yeah, but Google, Google doesn't like keyword stuffing, and they'll kick yeah, you out. Yeah, you just got to have it at, at, to a certain point. I think it's like two percent of the article needs to have those keywords in there. There's a, they have, there are a couple of uh, SEO plugins that you can utilize while you're writing your blogs on WordPress to know what your uh, you know what the percentage of of keywords you're utilizing in that in that blog post is. So, right, right, okay. Um, very interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so back to the original question: Why are we having this guy at the conference? Uh, what, yeah, I what, what, what the, value is he bringing other than to say, "Hey, write unique and engaging content." He is, and, and get a plugin like Yoast, which will help you focus on your keyword he, and do some keyword he, research. I just did, I just did his whole presentation. He will open your eyes so fast, Mark. See, the problem with Mark is Mark knows a little bit about everything and <laughs> a lot about a few things. It's and hard so, being the smartest person in the room. It really is. And so, you know, the, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I get really bored of watching Mark speak for two days straight. So I just want to mix it up. You know, I love, I love the way Mark looks. He's probably going to show his abs. You know, like he's just one of those guys where, <laughs> but at, the, at some point watching this geek up there speak, it's like just bring some change, you know? So, you know, Durant, I thought guy, you're, you're going to speak. You're sharing the conference. Aren't you? Are you not? I, I am. I am. But I'm not that cool either. This guy's cool. This guy. Oh, okay. Is, He's well, you know what? But what's he bringing to the table? Old. Oh, I'm not having a 28 year old at the conference. He's 28 years. 28 you didn't years say old. that. I'm not an ageist. I have nothing against young people. But come on, this guy. This ran guy doesn't know anything. He's 28 years guy, old. At 26, this guy ran 50 or 60 employees at a division here in San Diego at, a, at the, one of the largest digital media firms in the country, um, if not the largest. And and what's interesting is it's not just it, he, is, the is guy, that company still in business? I'm just curious. Yeah, yes, they of course they are. Okay. Just curious. You're funny, dude. You know what? I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have this guy body slam you when he gets there. Too. You know what? He's not coming. He is coming. He's not qualified. And you know what's awesome too is he's so excited about learning about land, and he's gonna come and talk about SEO and and you know writing content. And the guy has um, the guy has a, like a, a, a you know he's just got a lot of things that he can share with people to get them to understand the value of ranking organically in the search engine so all right, you know I don't, what it's all it's on you it's on I don't, you i don't this, care this guy is your responsibility if he comes in and he lays an egg it's on Dude, you you know what's awesome is that mark have you guys you know like the jealous wife like you're going out with your <laughs> friends like mark's like a jealous wife like mark what are you, what so are you talking scared. about How, so what, what am i jealous of a 28 year old that that has he like does, some kind of witchcraft and seo it's he's always six, changing. There's no no one knows about Google's six, algorithms. He, he's six four. He's a good looking guy. And Mark's scared. This guy steals his, his thunder. And Mark knows. Yeah. Like he's he knows. For me, I'm married with kids. Like he knows nobody cares. But when it comes to this guy, he is just scared. Mark is scared. So I'm letting oh. you all know that if you see the jealousy, um, I mean, if you see it, it it's going to come out for sure. For just sure. So let you all know. Yeah. What, so you be at the conference. There's going to be a lot of explosive. Now, now that you told me that he's a six four, good looking twenty eight year old, my wife will not be there. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So, um, anyway, he uh, he he actually just recently got married, so uh, you'll be okay, Mark. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Thanks for that. Anyway, so I, I do think there's going to be a lot of value. I wouldn't have somebody show up to this thing if I didn't think it was value. And uh, but yeah, that's that's why we're arguing about it right now is because yeah. I want I'm I don't you got to make me understand how someone can add value when we don't know what Google really wants. I mean, you're but saying look, they want unique and, and engaging content. But okay, that's one slide. How is that guy gonna? This guy has provide any with, more. This guy's probably worked with twenty Fortune five hundred companies. Okay, um, and sat in the sat sat in like board meetings with some big big guys. Okay, um, and guys that that literally look up to him for answers. He's twenty. He's a young guy, but he he knows the game so well. Like I would trust him um, to to answer the questions about where Google algorithm could go more than anybody I know. 
And it's and it, you know what? You may not find value in that, but there really is value. You if you try to tell me there's there's no value in your, teaching your customers how to organically rank their their web pages to get people to to buy land. There's something wrong with you, Mark. There's nothing wrong with me. There's something I, wrong. You know with what? You, you know what I would do? Did you take your medication this morning? I did. And you know what? You know what I would do? And what I teach is list building, and blogging is part of that, right? Yeah, but this and guy Facebook guy, is part of that. T- this guy will teach you how to blog. Who maybe how who, to blog? I, listen what to is me. It? Okay. Gosh, you listen to me for a minute, man. You are just are so argumentative today. I don't know what's going on with <laughs> it's you. Too much coffee. Did you get in a fight with your wife this morning? You know, what, no, it was it was wonderful. You know what it is? I'm all, I'm all caffeined up. Makes me <laughs> irritable. All the caffeine. Okay, listen. So all I'm saying is he'll he'll share. There are certain sites that you can join that you can write for. There are ways, and we talked about it before, which is funny because we talked about the Yahoo Contributor Network, which is no longer in existence. They closed that, I think, recently. Okay. Uh, but there are places where you can get your articles published, and by being a published writer, you can discuss, or, and he can help us understand. That's all I'm trying all to. All right, fine. Let's have him at the conference. You know what? Let's, he, let's he have the get, SEO guy at the is, conference. Is it okay if I bring Ted, my buddy Ted Turner, as well? Is that cool? Ted Turner is the largest landowner in the United States. But, but what's that he is, that's is, relevant. But no, Bring, Ted relevant. No, Bring Ted Turner. Bring Ted Turner. No, Ted told me he doesn't want to come because he doesn't like you. He told me that you – Bring, there's nothing about you that he wants to listen to. He he is so upset with you right now. Actually, I've got him. He's listening to this whole phone, this whole uh, podcast uh, live, and he's upset with you, Mark. So, I, well, uh, I'll deal. <laughs> I'll deal with Ted. All right, listen. We're at that point in the podcast where I get to put you on the spot. What is your tip of the week? And look, before you know, let me preface this by saying, I have I don't know this guy. I have nothing against this guy, and uh, I have a lot of respect for Duran. And his opinions. I just want to pepper him enough to really fu- feel the the full conviction of, of having this guy before I just say yeah. But I'll vet him anyways. Trust me. Okay. Tip of the week. Tip of the week is going back to SEO, which is still alive and ticking, Mark. I don't know what you're thinking, but maybe <laughs> Mark said, SEO is dead. It's I not didn't, dead, I didn't say SEO is dead. You basically did I say, say you SEO know what? is dead. I said Google changes it. You can't count on it. You can't. You've never been able to count on. Well, it. let's just fine. You've never been able to count on whatever. I think it's a made-up industry. But go ahead. Wow, you folks! I want you guys to write that down. Did you hear what Mark just say? He thinks it's a made-up industry. I'll, and I'll, he's been and making and money. I'll tell the, that, he's been I'll making money on the your, internet your, for your, years. Your buddy's and he face. thinks it's a made-up industry. Hey, Al Gore invented the internet, so you better really enjoy that. And I just heard he's suing Al Jazeera for sixty-two million dollars. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> keywordspy.com. Is, Keyword uh, spot. Let me check this out. Is is actually kind of cool because it, it can show you if you have if you have a specific land website or you're focusing on a particular area of properties and you have a domain name. It'll show you who is your competition. What are the keywords you're currently ranking for? It's a cool platform, so you can kind of track and follow. Kind of similar. It's got some aspects of um, Market Samurai, which we've discussed uh, many, many, many podcasts ago. Uh, what, is, what does this thing cost? Um, I don't know the cost. Um, there is a free trial. Oh I my pro- gosh, Duran! What? This thing's ninety bucks a month, dude. You know what? Some people really believe in keywords. <laughs> yeah, but wouldn't, wouldn't we better be better off getting no, Market you, Samurai? You don't, you don't need it. You just you just go on there and you can punch in a website. You don't ha- you don't have to pay for it. They'll do like you'll, you can actually just look at some stuff and get a basic understanding. So so if you popped in like uh, like if I popped in. Um, what's your uh, land geek? Uh, actually, that, that might be a good idea here. Let's pop in land geek while we're speaking. Yeah, www.thelandgeek.com. Okay. The, no, the land geek. I got that, bud. All so right, orga- just orga- organic keywords is ugly geek, and you rank 20 for that. Good. It's uh, <laughs> good. It's good. Geek land okay. is also ranking. So that there's no competitors for Mark, which is good. Great. Um, or this doesn't show it. So, uh, you know, so Mark is in the fifth position for geek land. For so Geekland, I, great. Yeah, I'm not sure what Geekland is, but you know what? He might find some stragglers from looking for Geekland. They come to Land Geek. Interesting. Okay, that's so, domains. Let's look at keywords. Yeah, I'm looking at the keywords. That's, that's the keywords. That's the keywords. Domain. Yeah. Oh, okay. Geekland. 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 So, anyway, um, that being said, uh, it this is just a. It's not a. Like I said, you can use the free portion of it. Like if we typed in, um, I don't. Mark, what is your uh, land website? FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. 
So if we go to my keywords for reserve land, it's number one. Uh, I've got to work on some rank cheap land in Nevada, cheap land, cheap, you know, cheap. I don't know. I've got a bunch of rankings on page two, which aren't great. Um, and I need, to, I need to tweak those a little bit uh, more. But if you want to go into more detail, you could use it for a month just to track it. And then I'm sure you could turn it off and turn it back on in six months. So uh, there are other ones like it, but I think it's a, a great little website. All right. Well, you know what? It's been a long time since I think I have came up with a tip of the week that beats yours because you've been so on fuego. Um, but I think Keyword Spy is cool. Don't get me wrong. I just thought it was a little expensive. All right, but because my tip is free, it's free, and I, you know, I kind of brought up list building earlier in the podcast while Duran and I were arguing, and this site is fantastic because it's it's kind of a sweet way of getting your website visitors to opt into your list, and it's a free uh, WordPress plugin, or you can do a download. Either way, it's www.appsumo. Dot com forward slash scroll box. And if we've all been on the sites where out of the left hand side or right hand side or the bottom of the screen, it gently prompts you to say, hey, want to learn more tips and tricks and techniques on how to make money buying and selling raw land? Go to WW, you know, opt in here and you just put in your email address. So check that out, appsumo.com forward slash scroll box. Duran, are we good? You're not mad at me, are you? I get, it's not mad. It's just I feel bad for you. Thank you. That's I, really bad. I, I appreciate it. On my birthday weekend, I'm going to hit a hole in one just for you, Mark, just so and maybe make, make you feel better. That would make me feel better about myself. I don't know okay. how, but I guess it yeah. would because I live vicariously through you. Perfect. All right. Well, listen, if you want more tips, tricks, and techniques on how to make money actively and passively investing in raw land, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always engaging and informative podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And give Duran some love. He needs it. You can tell. Go to reserveland.com. Check out landhub.com. Get your land listings uh, you know, syndicated everywhere. And uh, look, if Duran doesn't have any wholesale property you want, Give me some love. Check out FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. And uh, I do want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy day to to uh, listen to our podcast. Duran, are we good? No, dude. We're not good. Do you want to, I'm still, you're I'm still, still upset. I, you're still I'm upset? still upset with you. No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, thank you for letting me. I should have done the outro as well, you know? You could, you could do the outro. You know, let's remind everybody, save the date. Uh, start booking your, uh, your tickets for the – two-day boot camp. Duran's going to have a side up. We're not, we don't have the venue yet or the dates, but it's going to be in October. And maybe, um, maybe early November, just depending on, uh, on what we No, I don't want to push it to early November. Why? Because I don't. I want to do it in October. Okay. I want to do it before Halloween. Don't be a it's, turkey. It's, it's been too long. And October is beautiful here. Okay. Well, it's, it's still a little warm. You know what? And you can still swim. So for our East Coast friends, they can right, come perfect. out here and have a vacation. All right, man. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have, have a great day, guys. We'll see everybody uh, next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.